All right, let's get to the Roto World headlines. Or ban. <laughs> yes. You don't have to laugh at that. Yeah, you're. I just, like you know ban. what? I want to be clear about this, Jay. I want to just. I want to Talk say to this to you. you. I want to say this to you, and I want to say this in front of America, not privately, not behind some closed doors. You know. Talk I, to me. I want to say this in front of witnesses here, in in front of at least yeah, the massive audience we've got here on uh, here on Peacock Live, which is you've got the gig. You don't have to fake laugh at everything I say. You don't have to Ed McMahon it. You don't have to Robin Quivers it. You can, you know, like you can, you can legitimately, you know, laugh or or ignore because not all my jokes are winners. No, they're I, not. I, I, In fact, there's right, a lot they, of losers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some, some like some clang off the rim, much like your Nets over there. <laughs> yeah, much like my Brooklyn Nets and yes. uh, James Harden, one of the great Brooklyn Nets of our time. Exactly. Let's talk about Legend. one of the great. Uh, Chicago Bears of recent times anyway. Will Justin they retire, Fields. When they retire his number, and I'm sure they're going to, you think they'll do it at a strip club? Will the ceremony be at a strip club? <laughs> or will it, or, or you think it'll actually be in the stadium? It'd have to be a bad strip club to represent <laughs> James Harden's time with the Nets. But, uh, <laughs> but that would be the local. If, if the legends are true, like he's a, uh, anyway, He's whatever. an all-timer. Uh, all right. He's an all-timer in other arenas. All right, let's go. Um, all-time fantasy all right. guy this year, Justin Fields' shoulder <laughs> was limited in Wednesday's practice, Matthew, and the Bears have added the great, the immortal Tim Boyle, from the Lions practice squad. We talked about this at the end of last uh, last show yesterday, and we thought, well, maybe this means adding Tim Boyle. Maybe this means they're going to shut down Justin Fields. But I weirdly think the news you just read is actually, you know, interesting because Trevor Simeon did not practice. He's banged up. And so Tim Boyle may be about depth behind Justin Fields and not necessarily, hey, we're shutting down Justin Fields. To me, the most exciting thing you just said was limited. Like, you, you can't be limited in practice if you don't practice. So the fact that on a Wednesday Justin Fields was out there means like, hey, there's a chance we see Justin Fields at home against the Packers. You know, young buck against the old uh, gunslinger Aaron Rodgers coming to town. So we'll see. Um, I think, I think obviously if Justin Fields is playing, I think you're starting him. Like even a 70% Justin Fields without Darnell Mooney is still better than a lot of the guys you're going to roll out there because you would expect him still to run. You know, that would be my expectation here. But other than him and David Montgomery, who we'll talk about in a little bit, I don't want a part of this Bears offense. Chase Claypool, number one wide receiver now. Kind yeah. Of cooked I, Sauce Gardner on one play. Yeah, I mean, I listen, it's obviously Darnell Mooney's injury is obviously increased opportunity for Chase Claypool. And so I'm open to the idea. I'm not shutting it out. I'm not saying no. But against Green Bay, my expectation here, especially – let me find out who the quarterback is. I'll feel better about Chase Claypool if it's Justin Fields, if it's Trevor Simeon or uh, Nathan Peterman or Tim Boyle under center. Yeah, obviously, you don't feel Tim great Bay. about that. My expectation against Green Bay, um, who over the last four weeks is the second worst run defense in the NFL, is that this is all David Montgomery. Yes. It's, it's more, more, more. And we're going to talk about hint. Here's, here's, a, hint, here's a little a sh- foreshadowing for you. Yeah. You know, it's the love-hate show. Dave Montgomery makes the love list. I'm yes. just going to go ahead and, and blow that surprise right now. We'll talk about him. How many times did Justin Fields throw the first time they played? It was 11, 11 passing attempts, something, something like that. Not some, expecting they'll be throwing much. Regardless. Something like this. And again, I mean, like they were playing, they were at the Jets, and it was Simeon's first start, but, you know, 10 fantasy points. So it's like you don't have a ton of confidence in a non Justin Fields quarterback for the Bears. No. You've got or, more confidence, though, in Mike McDaniel, one of the best head coaches in the league this year. And he said, What that are he his thinks, odds for a coach of the year? It's like plus 600 or so off the top of my head. Nick Sirianni's the favorite because he's only got one loss. But I actually, I, I think I'd rather put some money on Mike McDaniel. I'll tell you why. Number one, it, so plus 600, you like those odds, obviously. I, this is a media award. He's and very the, cool. People love Mike McDaniel. He's very cool. Like, he's funny and sort of awkward, and I think he reminds sports writers of themselves. You know what yes. I mean? They're like, I, I'm awkward <laughs> as well, but also I'm funny, and they're not. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm funny. It's a very dry sense of humor. Yes. He's, he's great. Like, he's, you know, like, I would, I would want to cover the Dolphins just to go to his press conferences. Like, he's great. Yeah, I agree. And look, they're like plus 250 to win the AFC East. And if they win the division over the Bills, then you think that he probably just wins Coach of the Year. But he said that right. he thinks Raheem Mostert can play with his knee injury in Week 13 against the 49ers. Raheem was friend of the podcast, limited in yep. practice yesterday. What does this do for the Dolphins' backfield? I think it complicates it a little bit, but not that much. I think I'm more concerned about the fact they're playing the San Francisco 49ers, who allow the fewest rushing yards per game to opposing running backs so far this season. So, you know, I mean, 
and, and, and you don't want to say, like, ah, it's a revenge game. Mike's going to try to give him one because it's also one for Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah. Yeah, right? And we expect both guys there. And so my, my expectation here is that you see – uh, a split of carries here. I think it's probably going to be 60-40 in favor of Wilson, maybe even 65-35 here in a tough matchup uh, in a game in which potentially is is um, is low scoring. Like it's uh, the the most recent line I saw was 46 and a half. I, I like the I haven't updated that. it. Yeah, yeah, I haven't updated it today, but like I saw, as of yesterday, it was 46 and a half. So maybe it's moved a little bit. But yeah, so yeah, I think. It feels like a low-scoring game. It does to me, and because Teron Armstead is a huge part of that team. Yes. To me, he's their third most important player behind Tua and Tyreek. And when he came out of the game against Houston, Tua was under siege. He was getting sacked every second play. So that's a big concern for the running game and then also just for the passing game in general. So, yeah, I think that game goes on. And, and I also think, by the way, I mean, you just think about Miami. But Miami's a bottom 12 run defense over the last four weeks. So I think... It's a lot of Christian McCaffrey, and maybe you see some, whatever, some Tevin, Cole and Te- Tevin Coleman, Tyrion David- Davis-Price. But I think Shanahan's going to be like, we're going to win this game by grinding it out, s- long, sustained drives, not giving Tua and Tyreek, you know, time to, like, <clears throat> quick hit and everything like that. And so, yeah, I, I just – most of my running back 37. So, I mean, good news for – the Dolphins offense, but I think at least for this week against San Francisco, it's more about lowering the expectations for Jeff Wilson than it is about wanting to put Mostert back into your lineup. Yep. All right, let's go to Dallas Goddard, who's dealing with the shoulder at the moment. He said he hopes to return from injured reserve in week 15, so still a couple of weeks away. I mean, I think that this will hurt Devonte Smith, who had nine targets uh, on the weekend. It ends mercilessly, mercifully. The Grand Calcaterra era. I think he had minus two <laughs> yards uh, on the weekend. So, look, I think that, that you're starting Dallas Goddard as soon as he comes back, and you're still starting Devonta Smith probably, but it hurts him. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think it's unlikely he's available, but it's worth checking because he's not 100% rostered. He's actually available in about 16% of Yahoo League. So it's just worth checking to see if somebody got bye week, you know, stuck on a bye week and dropped him thinking he was done for the year because he's not. Prior to his injury, he was the third best tight end in fantasy on a points per game basis. Uh, you know, so it's worth seeing, like, especially down the stretch. Here's a schedule um, if he returns in week 15, right? At Chicago, at Dallas versus the Saints versus the Giants. You don't love that matchup with the Saints, but he's sort of matchup agnostic. I, like think, he's so, yeah. Yeah. I think so. You're just starting mm. Dallas Goddard if he's yeah. back, given the paucity of the tight end position. Let's talk Ooh. about Jalen Warren. Hey, like, by the way. The, somebody using the word paucity on this on this podcast like was like plus, plus 800. Yeah, well. There you go. Was, that just cashed. I was thinking, I couldn't think of another word. And paucity <laughs> just, just sprung to me. Jalen Warren said doctors have cleared him to return from his hamstring injury. He expects to play this week against the Falcons. So don't go blowing any budget on uh, the great Benny Snell Jr. as you like to call yeah, him. Yeah, well, Benny the Snell, unfor- you know, the, the, a lot of people already went through waivers. Well, we talked about this, that we didn't we, – we thought that – if Najee Harris and Jalen Warren missed, it would probably be some Benny Snell, some Anthony McFarlane. You know, there'd be kind of a mixture there, but we thought at least one of them would be back and possibly both. Now, Najee Harris did not practice yesterday. We're taping this or shooting this, I should say, Thursday at, at 12 12. Uh, so we'll see if Harris comes back today on a Thursday, but certainly Warren needs to be rostered. We do expect, even if Harris is back, Maybe he's not 100% healthy. They were already using Warren prior to his injury, prior to Harris's injury as well. They play the Falcons this week. Atlanta's, juicy, juicy matchup. That is a yeah. juicy matchup. That's Take the that correct. Lawrence. That's the correct ma- That's the correct use of it. Yes. Lawrence, of course, is a fan of the Atlanta Fal- yeah, Falcons. He that, grew up around there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. At, at that Lord is a, don't juicy. Yeah. At Lord don't juicy. He. Uh, it is a. Uh, it is a juicy matchup. It is. Um, there's a lot of fantasy juice to be had from uh, potentially a Jalen Warren start, especially if Najee Harris misses. I currently have Jalen uh, Warren at running back 45 because my expectation – when I, I'm doing my rankings as if Harris is going to play. But if Harris is out, if he misses today, I'll start rising Warren in my ranks. Yep. All right, let's talk about some more running backs as we get to running back love <clears throat> height. What is this music? <laughs> It's kind of scary in a way. Mm. Uh, let's start with Ramondre Stevenson, who is a frequent guest in this part of Love Hate. Yeah. He headlines the Love List uh, going up against the Buffalo Bills tonight. Tonight, absolutely. It is Thursday Night Football. And you had me at 
Listen, you know I've been pro Ramondre You're all season Ramondre long. Guy. Really hitched your it, wagon to it. Yeah, in the preseason, why is he being drafted behind Damian Harris? I prefer Ramondre Stevenson. You know, like guys, it is Ramondre Stevenson season, S E N, as the kids like to say. What's exciting for me, not only the fact that Damian Harris is out, not that we root for injury, but the fact of the matter is we should see a massive workload for Stevenson tonight. But uh, the workload, the passing game usage, right? Past five games, he's had 33 receptions. He's had at least six receptions in four of the last five, as you see it there on your screen. He's averaging over 106 yards from scrimmage since week three. This is a guy, he's basically 100 yards from scrimmage in the bank. And then you think about this Bills defense. Now, they're getting healthier. They're get, they lost Vaughn Miller, but they're getting some other guys back. But still, over the last month, the Buffalo Bills allowing over 100 rushing yards per game to opposing running backs, games in New England. How do you stop a Josh Allen? You keep him on the sideline. And so I think you expect a run-heavy, uh, slow-paced offense from the Patriots tonight. Yep. We talked about this yesterday as well, is that Mac Jones looked fantastic against the Vikings. He looked like he was back. And I think there was he a He looked line like of, Tom Brady. Yeah. Better than Tom Brady right now. Right. I think there's a line of thinking that, well, Mac, he came back off the injury, had to play the Jets twice, have a really good secondary, played the Colts and Sam Ellinger where he didn't have to do anything. So maybe he's just back to being the guy from last year who was really, really good. So I wouldn't be riding off Mac Jones. I think that that just helps Ramondre Stevenson, better offense, more scoring opportunities. Yeah, by the way, the Bills are a bottom five pass defense in the last month. Like, I mean, like Chronically banged up. There's yeah, always no, guys I mean, missing. The, again, Tredavious White back. I mean, like, again, they're getting healthier on defense. So, um, but I will say that after losing a game that they honestly should not have lost, that they should not have lost on Thanksgiving, and this is a divisional matchup, games in New England, Patriots will be ready. Bill, I'm not saying they're going to win, um, but uh, the fact that what, the line is, I think, three, it's down to three. Three it was, and a half it, at the it was, it was four and a half yesterday. Yep. So, I mean, people, the, the public are on, on, on the Patriots as well, but – uh, just the fact that, you know, everyone's expecting this to be a very close game where at the beginning of the year, if you'd set this line, it would have been like seven, right? You know, it'd be easy. Yep. So uh, I, um, this one will be uh, really interesting to sort of see how it plays out. The other thing I'll say here, just real quickly, is I don't know if you've seen this, but like this was a tweet that was going around Twitter, like, uh, which I thought was amazing. Uh, somebody p- put the uh, the – the Hunter Henry touchdown from Thanksgiving yep. up against the Travis Kelsey touchdown, right. which was a very, which is basically the exact same play, which is he landed on the goal line yep. and the ball squibbed free. Hunter Henry actually had more control. It moved, but he ended up control. You know, he ended up co- controlling it. T- Travis Kelsey fell down on the goal line and then it squibbed out. Kelsey's was called a touchdown. Hunter Henry's was not. That was Absolutely a touchdown. It was and a, the thing is, is when it's called a touchdown on the field, if you have to look at it 50 times, thank then you. it's a touchdown because it's not Preach. clear and conclusive. Preach. Yeah. Preach. The, the rule Very is it has to be clear and overwhelming evidence. It, you know, if it is, it, it has to be clear and conclusive. And so if it takes more than 30 seconds, it ain't yes, conclusive. It's a touchdown. Very frustrating. It's a touchdown frustrating or for, it's uh, whatever it was called on the field. Yes. Very frustrating for Patriots plus three betters like myself. Yes. Let's go talk about David Montgomery who lit up the Packers when he faced them back in, I think, week two on Sunday mm-hmm. Night Football. That was a strange game because the Bears were just averse to throwing entirely right. and the Packers still couldn't stop David Montgomery and he's on the love list. And they were down. Not only were the Bears yeah. not throwing, but they were getting their ass kicked. You know what I mean? And so, uh, but they still ran. They were like, we're not going to throw. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. We don't care what the Get score is. We, we are going to establish this run. Dang it. And uh, so you mentioned that first matchup week two at Green Bay. Ultimately, he wound up with 136 yards on 17 touches. Khalil Herbert, um, you know, also got some run in that game here. Since Khalil Herbert went on the IR, uh, Dave Montgomery has over 110 total yards in both games. Packers have allowed over 100 rushing yards to running backs in six of the last seven games. Miles Sanders just got off the schneid in a big way against them last week. I mean, you just saw. I, I mean, like, you can run on the Packers. And by you, I mean literally you. Yes. You, Jay Croucher, can run on the Packers. The only person who can't is Derrick Henry. Uh, it's some the, reason, well, I know. So weird. It's so super weird. Well, they, I think they literally put all 11 in the box against <laughs> Derrick Henry. Um, anyway, Dave Montgomery is my number running 13 running back. Running back 13 for me. He makes the love list. Full speed ahead, no matter who's at quarterback for Chicago. Yep. Now, I haven't been able to locate this guy the past two weeks, but I've located him today on my rundown, and that's Damian Pierce, who was on the love list with a very favorable matchup against the Cleveland run defense. Yeah, he's been bad the last two weeks, to your point, but my expectation here is is that 
they're gonna they're going to continue to run him. Like he's still getting work, even though it hasn't been super productive. The Browns aren't gonna blow out the Texans. I don't. I mean, anything's possible, but I don't believe that. I, I honestly think this is how I think this game plays out. It's Deshaun Watson's first game back. It's on the road at Houston. Deshaun Watson hasn't played an NFL game in like almost two years. I don't, and I think, especially given that he's going back to Houston, where um, where so many of uh, his alleged incidents happened, um, and there'll be a lot of a uh, lot of news around uh, and controversy around his return to not only the NFL but specifically Houston. My expectation is that what they want to do is uh, Cleveland's going to want to just try to make it not about Deshaun Watson and try to run the ball, especially given the fact that, A, that's a strength of Cleveland. Nick Chubb's as good a running back as there is in the NFL from a pure talent standpoint. And, B, like, the Texans have a historically bad run defense. And so, like, ease, ease Watson into uh, playing, you know, quarterback in the NFL. We're not going to try to make you – you're not going to have you win it. Like, let's try to get you a W here. And so, in what I expect to be a fairly slow-paced game, I don't think the – Texans are down by a significant margin, at least, you know, for a while. So I think they should be able to uh, run effectively against the Browns. And it's worth noting, as you mentioned, literally since week four, they allow the second most rushing yards per game to running backs. They've given up the, the most, they're tied for the most rushing touchdowns allowed to running backs over that stretch. They give up the second most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Damian Pierce is good. Like, yeah, I'm back in on Damian Pierce this week. I know it's been a tough couple of weeks, but top 15 play for me this week and I just want to be clear like last thing I want to just say here and I give this caveat all the time but I think it's important because not everybody watches every show we have to talk about Deshaun Watson from a fantasy football perspective because that's the gig um uh and so I'll just leave it at that like lots to discuss about him yes. as a as a person as a as whether he should even be in the NFL and, and but anyway he is, he's eligible to play in an NFL game this Sunday. Our job is to talk about his fantasy football perspective and a, you know potential, and so that's what we're doing, and we're leaving it at that. Yes, we will navigate that. All right, others receiving votes. Quickly, as we see some of the names, including Brian Robinson Jr., who's been running angry lately. Yeah, yeah, over those last four games, by the way, the Giants have allowed six rushing touchdowns to running back, and so now Robinson, to your point, who's had 15 touches now or, or more in three straight games, including over 20 and two of them, should get a lot of run against the Giants. He comes in at running back 25 for me, Kieran Williams. Look, it doesn't have to be pretty. Like, this is damning with faint <laughs> praise, but he is the lead running back of the Rams so far, and, Se uh, and Seattle does allow the third most fantasy points to opposing running backs. He's running back 27 for me, so he's a low-end flex, but if you're desperate, you could do worse and probably have. And then finally, the Gus bus. We'll see if J.K. Dobbins is active for this one, but Gus Edwards came back, immediately got 84% of the team running back carries. He had 16 carries and a touchdown in both games he's played so far this year. And Denver, for all their struggles on offense, they also haven't been great against the run. Since week four, they allow the fifth most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Give me the Gus bus against Denver as a top 30 play. Yep. On Brian Robinson, just quickly, he's the highest rated rookie running back by PFF right now. And he got shot at the start of the season. He has been fantastic. Even though he doesn't have the yards per carry, he has the success rate. He's playing fantastically. He should be. Weeks. He should. He should be comeback player there. He won't be. He's no. not eligible. But that when you think about, by the way, when you think about, I mean, and it's not fair because Brees Hall got hurt. But um, the fact that, you know, we're seeing what Ken Walker is doing right now. Um, we're seeing what Damian Pierce has done. We saw what Brees Hall and the fact that Pro Football Focus has Brian Robinson as their number one rated uh, rookie running back is unbelievably impressive. I would just also give it makes you hey, can I uh, let me <laughs> let me look under the hood here a little bit. Uh, I mean, I love Brian Robinson, he's been but good. He's he been has good been lately. he's been very good. All right, let's get he's to been, some guys. He's been very good. And what was exciting, by the way, last week is he actually started getting involved in the passing game. Yes. He, only, he only caught a couple of balls. One of them he won of, He turned into a touchdown, but still, like even even two or three receptions a game is huge for Brian Robinson. Um, all right, let's flip Love over. Let's Robinson. flip over to the hate list, uh, including another popular name here, Miles Sanders. Notwithstanding what he did uh, on the weekend, but he gets a very tough matchup against Tennessee. Week one, week one was the last time that the Tennessee Titans allowed an opposing running back to get over seventy rushing yards yeah. in a game. Week one, this entire year, they've given up two, two touchdowns to an opposing running back. Two rushing touchdowns, I should say. They've given up two. 
Like, I can count the number of rushing touchdowns they've given up to opposing running backs on one hand, and I don't need three fingers. Yeah, I could do, the other three fingers, I got, I got all sorts of stuff I could do with those three fingers. And I, I only need two on, to count the two rushing touchdowns. Um, over the last four weeks, by the way, Titans allowing just 50 rushing yards per game, under three yards per carry to opposing running backs. I, and also, the other thing is, Tennessee is the worst pass defense in the NFL over the last month. So if Christian you're Fulton makes me nervous every time they throw in his direction. Yeah, yeah you can I, throw in that second. Right, day. exactly. So the expectation here is that you see Jalen Hurts. It's going to be a Devontae Smith game. It's going to be an A.J. Brown game, somewhat of a Jalen Hurts game. Uh, yeah. Revenge game for A.J. Brown. You Revenge know, they, game for give A.J. Game. Exactly. All the t- yeah, the, the, it's, it's not the it's – the, there is a bunch of games where a former player – is going to face his a, a, t- a player a, a big name player is going to face his former team, and um, you know so AJ Brown uh, of course uh, you know facing um, uh, facing the Titans Tyler Conklin of course facing the Vikings okay. I'm sure that's a <laughs> sure. big one that you're yeah. uh, you're focusing I on think about that one. but uh, so it's not the one that's going to get the most attention this week but it is the one that'll make you le- feel a lot less icky yeah there you go okay let's get to Jamal Williams. Four straight games with zero targets. He's not involved in the passing no. game. Just and, scores touchdowns and nothing else. And and one of the things that we didn't talk about in Roto World Headlines is that DeAndre Swift, you know what happened yesterday? What happened, Matthew? He wasn't on the injury list. Unbelievable. For the first time, I think, I think since like I think since 2005, I think the first <laughs> time he wasn't on the injury list. Completely healthy, apparently. And so thinking about the fact that Jamal Williams doesn't have passing game usage, we expect an increased workload for DeAndre Swift because now he's fully healthy. And uh, you mentioned the touchdowns, right? Okay, so, well, in games in which Jamal Williams doesn't score a touchdown, he's averaging 7.5 fantasy points per game. The Jaguars have allowed one rushing touchdown the last three games. And so, m- less of a workload, no passing game usage, tough matchup. Jamal Williams outside my top 20 this week. Okay, let's talk about Latavius Murray, the, uh, the superstar of the Denver Broncos sure. offense. Their identity, their hub, their beating heart. But uh, he didn't do much uh, on the weekends and not expecting much from him against Baltimore. He's unfortunately not. Again, we talk about, like, one of the – there's a couple of pros to Latavius Murray, and one of them was, like, he's going to get all the work. Well, Mike Boone activated off the IR this week. We expect him uh, to play. We hope – or we hope he should play. There's a chance that he could play this week. He's activated, practicing. Um, but either way, it's a tough matchup against the Ravens. Baltimore allowing under 45 rushing yards uh, to running backs now in four straight games. They've given up 2.6 yards per carry to running backs. They've given up just one rushing touchdown in the last four. And so don't you think that if you're Baltimore, you're like, you know what? We'll take our chances with Russ. Yeah. <laughs> we need to stop Latavius Murray. Latav- former Raven, another, another revenge game. <laughs> another one I've another completely hashtag, forgotten about. <laughs> yeah, another hashtag revenge game. Latavius Murray, um, uh, who had a cup of coffee with the Ravens. There's, but revenge game, there's like half the teams in the NFL that could be a revenge <laughs> game for Latavius Murray. But once again, a, a player facing a former team that won't make you feel icky. Uh, Latavius Murray outside my top 30 this week, especially if Boone is active. If Boone's out, then you raise him a little bit because maybe there's a chance he falls into the end zone. Uh, but I, I think the Ravens take care of business in this one. I don't think it's going to be that close. I think, you know, they struggled last week. I think the Ravens, Ravens know. minus eight and a half is one of my favorite bets this week. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.